Today we're gonna learn how to create really amazing black and white conversions using calculations and guess what? All this in 30 seconds. In the first part of the video, I'll show you how to do that in 30 seconds because I know some of you guys, including me, are a little impatient. In the second part of the video, we'll learn how it actually works, the explanation part. This is really essential, guys. Do not miss it because if you understand it, you'll never forget it. In the third part of the video, we'll learn some awesome tips and tricks to finish it off. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and by the way, you already know that if you want to download the photo, check the link in the description below. So the first thing, once you have imported the photo, let me show you how to do this in 30 seconds. Once you have imported the photo, the time starts now. All you have to do, go to image, then calculations. Once you click on calculations, now you just have to make a couple of choices. Make sure the source one and source two are the same, which is the same document. This is old man portrait PSD. So the source one and source two should be old man portrait dot PSD. And the layer should be the background layer because there's just one layer doesn't really matter. Okay. Now first choose the blending mode. If you wanted to have more contrast, choose overlay, little contrast, soft light, a lot contrast, hard light, lighten to lighten, darken to darken, multiply to darken, screen to lighten and you know the rest. You can cycle through every blend mode if you want. I will choose say hard light and then I have an option to go ahead and decrease the opacity of the blending. So I don't want it to be that harsh so I would keep it at 80% and then choose channel for source one, any channel that you like, red, green or blue. I like blue and for channel look how beautiful this looks. Man, for channel two red, green, maybe I like the green here. Maybe I'll go with blue here and green here. How it look? How it looks? No, this doesn't look right. I would go with say green here and blue there. Now it looks pretty good. Now once you're satisfied with everything, so result in the result, choose new document and click OK. Now once you do that, a new document is created with the settings that you chose. Now here you have the original color version, here you have the black and white version and it's done. Now let's understand how this actually works. So let's go ahead and close this and we'll start over, okay? Now we have this image and I would say that again, I've said that already and I will say that again. Every image is composed of what? Red, green and blue. Every image that you see on the screen. Now, you can literally break an image into red, green and blue if you go to channels. So if we go to channels, as you can see, this is the combined RGB, right? This is the red, this is the green and this is the blue. Now some of you might ask if these are red, green and blue, why are they black and white? Good question. Let me show you why. These are just representations of red, green and blue. Let me show you how. If you zoom in and if you choose the red channel like I have chosen here, see this area? This area is very bright, which means that this area has a lot more red than this because this area is relatively darker. But if you go to the blue channel, have a look. This area is brighter and this area is relatively darker, which means that this area has a lot more blue than this. Okay, now if we go back to the RGB, look, this area had more red, this area had more blue. And that's how it works. The brighter the area, the more the color will be there in that particular area. And the darker the area, the lesser the color would be. So if you, if we go to blue, as you can see, this area is dark, which means this area doesn't have any of blue. If we go to red, as you can see, this area is dark. This area doesn't have any of red. Also, the same area doesn't have any of red because this area is black. I hope that clears the confusion. Now, what calculations allow you to do is that they allow you to blend two images. Now, these two images can be the same, a copy of the other, and then you can blend it in any way you want using a blend mode. And you can even blend two different channels of the same image. Let me show you how this actually works. So if we go to, I'm, I'm in the channels panel and if we go to image calculations, I have my source selected, which is the same as source one, source two. We can also combine two different images, which will be another tutorial, not for this one. In this one, we'll be combining just one. So source one and source two are the same. Layer is just one. You don't have to worry about it. Just the background layer in this one, just the background layer in that one. Now. 
the channels. Choose a channel that you like, for example, red. And if we choose, say, blue here. Now, what it's actually doing is that it's keeping whatever is there in source one, which is the red channel above, okay? And whatever is there in source two, which is the blue channel, which is right here, this one, below, okay? Red channel above, blue channel below. And then it blends both of them using a blend mode that you choose. For example, if I choose overlay, what it will actually do and the opacity 100, what that will actually do is that change the blend mode of the layer which is above, in this case, which is the red channel. The red channel is above, the blue channel is below. So it will change the blend mode of the red channel to overlay and decrease its opacity to whatever opacity you choose. For example, the opacity is say 80, Okay, I just hit enter, I shouldn't have hit enter. Okay, if the opacity is 80, I'll again go to image calculations. Say the opacity is 80. This is red, source one is red, source two is blue. What it will actually do, it will take the red channel, put it above, take the blue channel, put it below. Change the blend mode of this one to overlay. Change the opacity of this one to whatever opacity you chose, 80. And that's what it is. Now, the long process would be if you pick out a channel, put that in layers and do the same, it will have the same result, okay? But it does it fast, that's what it does. Now, you can choose the result to be a new channel. What that will do in the same document, it will add another alpha channel or you can choose to have a new document like we did previously. And selection is, it makes a selection based on luminosity based on brightness. The brighter area will be selected and the darker area will not be selected. That's not important for this one. Let's try new channel this time, okay? So if we choose new channel, you always have to choose new document and new channel will also do, it's the same thing, click OK. Now this creates a new channel, alpha one. Now what you can do, you can select this channel, press controller command A, controller command C, and then come back to RGB, come back to layers, create a new layer, and press controller command V. So this brings that into this new layer. So that was pretty simple, right? Hope you understood it. Now let me show you a couple of tips and tricks to really, really bring the best out of your photo. So let me do that really quickly again. Go to image, calculations. I promise I won't make any delay. So uh, I would choose channel green, that's okay. Blue, hard light, 80%, that's perfectly fine. But this time, if you wanna go further with this, you always have to create a new channel, okay? If you wanna further edit, Please create a new channel. Now, click OK. This creates a new channel there in the channels. All you have to do, Controller Command A, Controller Command C, come back to the RGB, come back to layers, create a new layer, Controller Command V. Now, th you have this in your own channel. Now, let's add some more dimension to the eyes. By the way, I already have a complete playlist about editing eyes, retouching eyes. If you wanna go ahead and check it out, check it out right here. So, all you have to do, let's zoom in quite a bit and create a new layer. And look at the direction of light. So the light is coming from this direction. So you have to first go ahead, create an elliptical marquee tool with the elliptical marquee tool selected, create a circle, and to move the circle, press the space bar, hold the space bar and then move. Make it just a little smaller than the eyeball, just like that, and place it in the center, just like this. Okay, now, Select the polygonal lasso tool, this one, and the direction of light is this, coming from this direction. Just perpendicular to this direction, create a line and subtract that area, okay? Just halfway through, just like this. Press and hold alter option. This changes this tool into negative polygonal lasso tool, and then create something like this, maybe. I think I should delete a little more, just like that. Now it looks fine. Also, again, go to the elliptical marquee tool, press and hold the alt and option to make it minus and create a circle and delete this area. Just like, create just like a slice of a fruit. Now, fill this with white. Alt backspace. Make sure the foreground color is white. If it's not white, press D to reset the swatches and then press X. Something strange happened. Okay, now fill this with white. How to fill this with white? Alt backspace. If you're using a Mac, it would be option delete. Controller command D. Now let's add a Gaussian blur to it. Filter, blur, then Gaussian blur. Let's add a pretty nice blur maybe of say, not too much. 13.9 is fine. Click OK. 
and change the blend mode of this one to overlay. Now it looks really good. So let's go ahead and erase some extra area. So we'll take an eraser and we'll erase this area. This is extra, the top area, and it's looking pretty fine. Now it's not so bright, so what do we do? Make a copy of it, press Ctrl Command J. Now, look how beautiful this looks now. All you have to do now is make a group of both of these. So press Ctrl Command and hold that and select the other one, press Ctrl Command G. Now, make a copy of this group and move this to the right eye. There we go, just like that. Now, look how interesting this looks now. If I zoom out, so look. And, and you can create a group of both of these groups. So press Ctrl Command, hold that, select the groups, Ctrl Command G again. So before, after. Now, if you wanna lower the intensity of it, opacity is always your best friend. So I would choose somewhere around this, 60 is fine. And that looks pretty nice. Also, for these kind of portraits, if you want a black background, you can easily do that. So go ahead and select this one and create a mask first. And below this layer, create a solid color adjustment layer. Okay, so click on this gray white icon and choose solid color and choose black. So in the background, we have the black, then we have the layer. So if we delete the background areas of the layer, we'll see what? Black. So select the mask of this layer and then take the brush and simply paint it out because it's the edges are already dark so you just paint it out with black make sure the foreground color is black and just paint it out slowly there we go just like that you can be super careful with this but i'm just going to paint it out show you how this actually looks just like that and you got to be a little careful here near his coat just like that and it's pretty much and be a little careful and done there we go let's just fill it be a little careful here and you can take your time you get the idea okay let's fill this carefully and there we go it's done have a look how beautiful this looks now and if i change the background to say white this looks much more beautiful now this is where we started and this is where we are so that's one of the dozen ways of making a beautiful black and white conversion in photoshop just remember this image calculation what does calculation do well it blends two images and both of the images can be the same you can even blend channels of separate images okay and you can blend them using a blend mode. You can also control the intensity of the blend mode. And that's pretty much it. And a couple of tips and tricks to really bring the best out of it. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe. And not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.